And joining me now, Paul Jacobson, who is the Chief Financial Officer of GM. Paul, always a pleasure to speak with you and get an insider's look at what's taking place uh, quarter after quarter here. Vehicle sales in the U.S. and China, they were hit hard as a result of the ongoing global chip shortage we know. How is the company continuing to work with suppliers and engineering to manage expectations and improve production? Well, good morning, Brad, and uh, thanks for having us to, again today. You know, I'd like to start by thanking the, the people of General Motors for another outstanding quarter. Uh, as we had talked about in our previous guidance, we knew the third quarter was going to be challenging, uh, particularly as a result of some of the COVID issues that were impacting Southeast Asia and some of the processing and, and packaging uh, facilities of some of the chips that, uh, that we incorporate. And we certainly saw that uh, with, uh, you know, about a 200,000 vehicle decline in, uh, in our wholesale. Sales. And uh, but we got through that. We got through that with a really strong quarter, and uh, really looking forward to continuing to advance our plans towards those long-term goals you articulated. Certainly, the average sale price paid for a GM vehicle that topped fifty thousand dollars for the quarter, up more than sixteen percent from a year ago. Could continued supply chain issues impact vehicle prices going forward? How does GM uh, continue to think about the average selling price of some of those vehicles that are out there and which vehicles, most notably, that consumers are gravitating towards? Yeah, well, certainly um, during these times, Brad, people have been gravitating towards our um, you know, top of the line SUVs and, and full-size pickup trucks across the board, which tend to have a higher average transaction price. And, uh, and we've seen that. But not only that, they, uh, we see consumers buying up trim levels uh, and, and taking advantage of those options that we create. And that, that certainly is a strong testament to the products that we create and the, and the engineering and design teams across the board. We expect that's gonna continue. Uh, the consumer, uh, from what we've seen, is, is pretty strong. We see that in our GMF uh, financial subsidiary results as well. Uh, and you know, the second piece of that is the inventory levels are low across the board. Um, for the industry as everybody is, is facing some similar challenges from the chip production. So we see that continuing uh, into 2022. Uh, and it's been a large part that uh, the reason that the uh, financials have been so strong. When we think about the investments that GM is going to continue to make, um, I think about something that came out through this particular release, 2022-2023, opening new battery plants in Lordstown, Ohio, Spring Hill, combined capacity of 70 gigawatt hours there. When you think about the dollar figures that are continuing to be invested in the operational capacity and then ensuring that the workforce, the human resources are there necessary to be able to produce, you know, how do you evaluate where those returns on investment, uh, the timeframes that those will start to prove to be most accretive to the business? Well, we're very excited about that. And I think as I reflect on being here approximately a year, the thing that I'm most proud of of the organization is the fact that despite some of the short-term headwinds that we've seen, we actually leaned in and accelerated our plans this year, stepping up our capital uh, commitments from $27 billion in batteries and EV technology to $35 billion uh, by 2025. What that really represented is an inflection point to make sure that we stay ahead of the adoption curve going forward. So as we're rolling out our 30 EVs by 2025 and making strides in autonomous vehicles, we wanna make sure we've got the battery capacity and the supply chain in place to do it. So not only are we opening the two plants that you mentioned over the next couple of years, but we also pulled forward two more battery plants um, in our plans to make sure that we're staying ahead of the curve on that. And I really like uh, what the team is doing uh, in terms of, of bringing that forward to making sure that we're able to, to meet that customer demand as EV adoption grows into the future. Connected vehicles and other new businesses said to drive more than $80 billion in new revenue. Can you tell us more about GM's strategy to expand its vehicle connectivity and how we should be thinking about that? I think this is one of the most exciting things about our future is the way we interact with customers and, and the way that consumers um, are able to receive value from us uh, over the life of their vehicle is only going to increase over time. So we outlined this uh, over the next decade at our investor day uh, just over a month ago. We talked about a $50 billion opportunity at Cruise, which is our autonomous rideshare uh, subsidiary. They're very, very close to starting to offer uh, their first commercial ride and making great strides. And uh, we were able to have Dan Ammon talk about the, the pace of growth that we see in that business and the potential it represents. And then there was another 20 to $25 billion just through the connectivity of the vehicle. So with the new Altify platform uh, that we've rolled out, 
what it allows us to do is is bring in features and functionality to that vehicle as customers demand. And we've begun testing that with with consumers in terms of the research and and showing them what we can offer. And the results have been really, really strong, which is what's informed both our attachment rate uh, for customer subscriptions, but also the types of products and the amount of money they're willing to spend. So we're really excited about that piece. And you know, the key to that is making sure that we get lots of electric vehicles on the road. And that's what our Ultium platform does. It gives us a broader range of vehicles across the board, not just in the luxury space, but as we talked about at Investor Day, we, we see a vehicle in the $30,000 range coming very, very soon, uh, and even working on plans for something cheaper than that. So we see this as an opportunity to provide EVs across the board to everyone, uh, and that's what the scale and the creativity of GM allows us to do. With the investments that we've been discussing and, and all of the acceleration operationally, and then ensuring that in this time period, knowing the challenges that the market is facing, you know, that, that GM throughout this is able to navigate that, you know, how, and this entire earnings season, we've been thinking about this year over two metric, you know, what are the necessary kind of catalysts that you view as necessity in order to get back to some of those year over two metrics, if you will, of, perhaps $35.5 billion if we're comparing it to the Q3 of 2019 um, and that quarterly revenue rate that we had seen um, and even some of the earnings of that time period before. What are some of the catalysts that would get back to those revenue figures and, and what most notably do you prioritize day in, day out on that front? Yeah, so, you know, I think the, the number one factor in that, and, you know, I certainly understand some of the frustrations that the market has seen, and, uh, you know, I think we're navigating through it, is around chip availability and production. Um, so we saw a steep drop in production this quarter. Uh, despite that, we were able to achieve um, pretty strong results across the board. Um, but I think, you know, what, what when we step back and when I step back and look at, at, at where we are, we started this year with expectations of driving 10 to $11 billion of EBIT adjusted. Uh, we announced today that we're expecting to be at the high end of an 11 and a half to $13.5 billion uh, range for the year, uh, which tells you that we're actually able to do that. Historically, that's the type of impact on production that would have had really dire consequences to it. But for the most part, we've worked through it, we've thrived, we've put together our diversified portfolio, and we're able to lean into the future. So I think that's the, the strongest message. And as we see into the fourth quarter, we're going to see production tip up. Uh, tick up from the third quarter, uh, which is consistent with what we said uh, back in the uh, back in the summer, uh, and I think that'll continue to go. So we're certainly expecting 2022 to be more stable, uh, and certainly as we start to ramp production back up, we can get back to those more normalized numbers. The second aspect of it is we see a huge growth opportunity in EV sales. Mm -hmm. um, we ha EVs are popular in areas where GM has been somewhat underpenetrated in the market. And that's what the EV platform is going to be able to do to help us grow share in some of those regions of the country and areas of the world, uh, which are only going to help our revenue numbers going forward. And so given the EV figures and our viewers are taking a look at that right now, GM plans to have 30 electric vehicles um, and models on the market globally by 2025. Uh, we have talked at length about the production headwinds and, and rising commodity costs. Do you foresee any factors that could have the company miss this target or do you remain on track for that? No, I, th I would say that we remain on track, and that's you know the investment that we made earlier this year is only solidifying that going forward. So, you know that goes back to what I said earlier about you know being incredibly proud of the organization for despite some of the short-term headwinds, making sure that we're leaning in and keeping our eyes out on the horizon, because it's that investment philosophy that's going to going to get us there and help us achieve our uh, our goals over the next 10 years. And I'm confident that we're going to be able to get there. With these revenue forecasts, does GM plan to reinstate dividends in the future? You know, we've talked about that and, you know, we, we continue to evaluate that and discuss it with the board. I think we wanted to wait to get through some of the short term volatility that we see. So I expect that we'll have more news on that coming up. All right. And we also know that you aim to source 100% renewable energy to power U.S. sites by 2025. Is that also still on target? And how do you continue to kind of remain in lockstep in conversations more broadly around the environmental governance and, and sustainability governance um, that we're seeing across industry? Mm -hmm. 
Well, this is this is core and foundational to our values and and what we do. And you know, I'm glad that you announced that uh, or made in, in your question the 2025 date. We've actually pulled that forward this year. So not only are we on track, we continue to lean in uh, into sustainability across the entirety of the supply chain, across our own production, and across the vehicles that we produce. And uh, we're confident that we'll hit those goals as well. Paul, always a pleasure to speak with you and get some of the updates directly from the company. Paul Jacobson, who's the chief financial officer of GM. And we should mention that GM is a partner of Cheddar as well, everyone.